and please, we encourage them. It's great conversation. And uh, we shall go ahead and get started and let others join in as we go along. Sounds great. And if you do have questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to put them in the chat box in the bottom of your Zoom screen and we'll answer them at the end. Um, yeah, I well, think Chris Cords is going to join, but she's on a phone call right now. So I just was texting with her. So she'll be coming along shortly. Okay, great. Yeah, anyone? I, I wouldn't wait for her. Just go ahead and start. Okay. Well, Corinne and Laura and I are excited to inspire you about Alaska. Um, each of us has visited um, a few multiple times and we're excited to share some of our favorite insider tips and some of our favorite um, parts of Alaska. And so those of you who are new to Down Under Endeavors, welcome and it's good to see old friends as well. I started Down Under Endeavors 21 years ago when I moved from Australia and wanted to handcraft trips that got people to see Australia through the eyes of a local. And of course, 21 years later into our 22nd year here, at the moment, we can't send you to Australia this year or for the next few months at least. So we have opened and expanded our great services, the handcrafted white glove value service closer to home. And so we're bringing to you today one of the extra destinations we are selling and loving, Alaska. Same level of service, same attention to detail, value, along with that handcrafted touch. And just a quick overview of what we'll talk about today. We'll keep the webinar to about 30 minutes. Um, we'll discuss getting to Alaska, the best way to get there, and our top destinations in Alaska, places we recommend visiting on your trips, a few of our favorite backcountry lodges, um, a few special experiences that are really, really special to do, especially in Alaska, fishing and cruising. And then at the end, we'll have time for questions. So again, if you have any throughout the presentation, please feel free to put them in the chat box and we will see them and we will address them at the end of our presentation. And then we'll give you a sneak peek to upcoming Travel Tuesdays. So getting to Alaska, a lot of people haven't been to Alaska, so just to give you the basics and logistics of the best place to fly into from the Midwest and East Coast is into Anchorage. And you can connect easily from here, either by float plane or regular service to all of the other areas like Fairbanks and Juneau. So flying time direct from Chicago, to give you a sense, is seven hours, Los Angeles, five and a half hours, and New York, eight hours. So getting, a, getting around once you're in Alaska, it varies. Great self-driving, which we'll talk about today, and float plane service is fantastic. So you have a regular airport service and a float plane runway strip, water strip at the airport also. So those are fantastic ways to explore. And we're gonna start off a little bit with Anchorage. So Anchorage to me, I've been there a few times now. Uh, we just wanted to talk a little bit about the largest city here. And the float plane airport is spectacular to see. You'll see that coming in. But also the secondary airport, Wilson, is on the northeast side of town. So we know that logistics really, really well. One of the great places to stay downtown is Captain Cook Hotel. And that's the picture of the large building on the right. Uh, they do a really great service, really centrally located, main place to stay, but there are other great options nearby. And wouldn't be me if I didn't talk food. So for me, some of my favorite dining spots with Laura I'll touch on later is Moose's Tooth Pub, uh, where it had killer pizza. If you want something for a special occasion, we like to mix in like the Marx Brothers Cafe, uh, Glacier Brew House, if you're looking for a local microbrew, and Simon and Seaforts for that classic old seafood steak environment, but really great restaurants for brekkie sandwiches options to go as well and so what do we love to share for those of you who know me we love the people and so you're actually seeing John here one of our special touches we like to do is meet the locals so John is a really well-known artist in Alaska and his artwork is represented in galleries throughout the US and Europe as well so this is at his home and what makes his home so special as you can see here is going into experience this uh, if Nancy has joined us yet. 
we've got some wonderful clients in this photo. So a lot of these pictures are from our clients, which are just wonderful. But this is his home. He was uh, officially the artist since 1979 for the Iditarod race. And his historic talk of the famous slop de uh, sled dog race across country is fantastic. It's a great way kind of to start a vacation because you learn about the history and what makes John happy is to answer any questions you have. It's great for kids. It's a great start for families. So he actually still, him and his wife, Jonah, still raise and train Huskies for the race. It's a very special place. You can see a lot of the uh, work in the backyard there. They do some good treasure hunts with the kids. But uh, the Huskies hold a very special place in their lives. And it's really a great experience. This picture, if you, if you do one thing in Alaska, if you love to fish in Anchorage, it's to go to Ship Creek. It's located in downtown Anchorage, and it's a short walk actually from the hotel we spoke about, Captain Cook. And if you want to fish and gla just grab a glimpse of a 30 pound plus king salmon, what that looks like, this is the best place to see the locals fishing. You can actually join them. And just a little insider tip for you, best time to head down is two hours before a tidal change and the hotel can give you those details for that day. Uh, it can get muddy, so be prepared. But king salmon traditionally, late May to mid July in this area and silvers run here July through early September. So great experience in downtown Anchorage. And then we're gonna talk a little bit getting outside because truly you land at Anchorage and then you head out. So self-driving was one of our great experiences. This is not an uncommon sight to actually see one of the locals crossing the road. Uh, you'll meet them a lot along the way. So this was one of the photos we took when we left Anchorage Airport. Uh, and so from here, I'll hand over to Laura who actually did a great road trip from Anchorage. Thanks, Corinne. Um, and we saw some of the locals as well in Anchorage on our way. Um, I want to give a quick shout out. I saw a few clients on here. So Anne and Karen and if I missed anyone, hello. Um, so from Anchorage, we picked up our rental car and we headed up to Girdwood. Girdwood is approximately a one hour drive east of Anchorage along the Coastline Highway. Um, you can stop along the way for viewing sites or short hikes, it's beautiful. Um, Girdwood is a good spot to post up for several different activities. In the summer, you can enjoy things like hiking and wildlife sighting, and then the winter it turns into a ski resort. Um, my absolute favorite activity here was the heli dog sledding. So the flight base is located right outside of town. Um, they'll give you all the gear that you need and then they'll take you up on about a 10 minute helicopter flight to the top of a mountain. Uh, you'll then have the chance to see and learn about the dogs. These dogs are in training for one of the champion Iditarod teams. Um, so they spend most of their time up here on this mountain along with the staff that come in and out by a helicopter. And this particular team has won several times. Um, you'll get to go on a traditional sleigh ride, like you'll see here. This was uh, me and my family getting our run at it. Um, and if you're lucky, you'll even get to cuddle some puppies while you're up there, <laughs> which we got to do um, on our trip. I'll kind of let that play out. Um, these dogs get very, very excited when the sleigh comes out. Normally they're just laying in and around um, their little homes. And then once they start to bring the sleigh out, they just start to get nuts because they want to be picked to be on it. Um, and then about one hour from Girdwood is a town called Whittier. Um, you can take the train or drive there. The drive is beautiful. Um, I just make a note to leave early because you actually queue up to go through a one-way train tunnel um, to access this town. We recommend staying in Whittier. Um, there's just not a, a ton to like see or do there, um, but it's really, really good uh, base for day excursions. Um, from Whittier, we chartered our own boat and went into Prince William Sound to see some wildlife like whales, puffins, otters, eagles, and whatever else you'll find that day. 
Um, this is my family here standing in front of one of the glaciers. Um, so we did our boat trip and then um, we even shored up here. We're doing a little bit of a quick hike um, in the area. And then of course our lunch featured some fresh fish from the area. When we were in Girdwood, we stayed at an Alaska resort. Um, so it's slightly outside of town, which means you're right on the hiking trails um, and have access to nature. So on the right, you can see a pond in front of the resort. Moose will come and go for a swim or a bath here pretty regularly. I think we were there for 15 minutes before we saw one. Um, and the bears are pretty common on hiking trails. Um, so I, we do recommend bringing bear spray with you just to be safe. Um, Alaska is a solid like three and a half star hotel, but it's gonna offer clean and comfortable accommodation and great service. From Girdwood, we drove to Talkeetna. And um, so we went back to Anchorage, stopped there at the Moose Pub, which is a great spot, pretty popular, so allow you know a little bit of time. Um, and then Talkeetna is two and a half hours north on a good highway. Um, that was founded in the early 1900s on the Gold Rush. You can still see some of the old buildings around town. Um, this has quite a bit of character. And um, these days, Talkeetna does get a daily train um, with cruise passengers. And um, so the town can be pretty busy from about 10 to 4. Um, so if you stay in the area and stay overnight, it gives you a great chance to meet the locals, enjoy the restaurants and pubs, kind of outside of the like touristy hours. Um, from Talkeetna, there's a variety of activities available to you, hiking, fishing, ATV tours, float trips, and flight scene in Denali. Um, here we are, we drove to Denali State Park and we did a full day guided hike. Um, so there's, there's a variety of trails from easy to difficult. Um, and I think the, the wonderful part of Bart this is you can actually see Denali National Park and Mount McKinley and, and all of the peaks that are in it. Um, just because you're from a distance versus actually going to the National Park, you'd be you know, a bit closer up to it. So you got some amazing photos. And um, early one morning, I think we woke up or left at 5 a.m. maybe, um, we went fishing for king salmon uh, with an area local. So it was definitely, um, a, we were there a bit early in the season than we normally would be, but we caught a few. So this here is my brother um, with our catch of the day. <laughs> um, king salmon in this area is catch and release. Um, just because otherwise they're a bit overfished. So unless you're an Alaska resident, um, you know, you keep them in the water and send them back on his merry way. And we also enjoyed a half day ATV tour um, with Ken and crew. Um, here is Corinne's group on the ATVs. Um, and mine is, is popping up next. Um, if Ken is on today, we say hello. We loved your tour. <laughs> um, they offer experiences on private property with really wonderful views. Um, and Corinne and Doug have done this as well when they were there, obviously. Um, and then here we have Sunset. So this is the lodge um, that a bunch of us have stayed in. Um, one really fun thing to do that's unique is to be there during summer solstice. We've both experienced this. Um, the sun never really goes down. <laughs> so um, you'll see the next photo is um, about as dark as it gets um, during the day. So generally you're going to get about 23 hours of, of good light. Um, and now Corinne is going to tell you about a couple additional activities that you can do in Talkeetna. Yes, so a couple of you are on this call, you'll recognize your faces in this photo. And Francia, hi, thanks for joining as well. So one of the great experiences that we did out of Talkeetna was a whistle stop train. So you flag them down. It's one of the last float trips where you can actually flag down a train to stop 
and you jump on board there. We took the train north for a little ways. It was a great chance to see the scenery before we stopped out. So pulled the lever, stopped, and we jumped out of the train straight onto the wilderness. Our guide pumped up these rafts and we did a float ride back into Talkeetna, stopping along the way for a picnic lunch. The wildlife viewing was spectacular, especially if you love birds. The amount of eagles was fantastic. I would rate this day as an easy trip, and there are also other versions with a little bit more action, uh, but we wanted to do a float trip. One of my bucket list items, landing on a glacier on a float plane that turns into skis. And so this is truly one of those experiences that you must put on your bucket list. And this is a picture of Doug. Doug's on the call here. So Doug, we had a big snowball fight right after this. Uh, it was such a gorgeous day. Look, we're in short sleeves. And this is a long video that we're just going to show here that takes you. I was shooting this out of the window, but the, uh, how close you get to the mountains is incredible. Uh, there's several ways to experience Denali from the air. And the, this will definitely be a highlight of your trip if you really enjoy seeing glaciers and mountains that we don't get to see so much here in the Midwest. But two hour flight from start to finish is by far the most popular tour. And it's 45 minutes long uh, experience flight up to the glacier and around, getting past, as you can see, really close to the faces of it. And then uh, if you haven't flown on a plane with skis, landing in the bowl is a really fun experience. Uh, for those who are really active, there is a summit tour with a glacier landing, so it actually goes way up into Denali. And it talks, it's a longer trip, so it talks a lot about the history. But this is one because you're going to be possibly, if the weather's good, up to 20,000 feet in the aircraft that is not pressurized. Oxygen masks will be required for that. And so Denali isn't always clear like this. Uh, yeah, look about the, Mike, you're spot on about the glacier color. It's incredible. Um, but yeah, important to schedule a couple of days to make sure you can get up for that experience. And from here, Debbie will take us to Juno after I talk about a couple of my favorite little things. Brew pub, because once again, it's all about food and meeting the locals. Great places to come back and have a bite to eat. Uh, day is not complete without a pint with the locals. And I really loved Telkeetna because it was about meeting your guides at the end of the day, live music festivals and events and a great eatery. They even had a really good vegan uh, cafe takeaway. So Debbie, after now I'm making myself salivate, Juno. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> so Juno is Alaska's capital city. And fun fact, it's the only capital city in America you cannot reach by car. It's a great starting off point for a lot of different kinds of Alaska trips. Bear watching, whale watching, glacier excursions, and a lot of cruise ships leave from here as well. Um, and if you just wanna stay in town, there's some nice sights to see. There's the Alaska State Museum, there's a great downtown art scene, and some really nice restaurants. Some of our favorites are Sandpiper Cafe, Tracy's King Crab Shack, and a very famous place called the Red Dog Saloon. My favorite experience that I went on my most recent trip to Alaska was to Admiralty Island. Um, it's just a 25 minute seaplane flight to Pat Creek on Admiralty Island, which actually has one of the densest populations of brown bears in the world. Um, so you arrive on the seaplane and then walk in the water onto the sand where you actually bury your picnic lunch for later. Then you sort of walk in the rainforest to find these bears. So there's this great big tower you can climb up and see bears down below. It's really spectacular. You're so close to them. Um, and something nice that I liked is that they really limit the number of people to the island every day. It's just five guests per tour. Um, you can go there from May through September every summer. And if you really want to see, you know, get one of those iconic photos with a bear catching a salmon, the salmon runs are strongest from mid July to the end of August. So sort of towards the end of the summer. Some other great activities you can do from Juno include sea kayaking. These are my parents. So shout out dad, you're on the call, I believe. <laughs> Here's a picture of you I snuck in. Um, you can go really up close to these glaciers, which is just spectacular. And here's Corinne with some glacial ice. 
who knows how old that piece of ice is. And you can see scenes like this, you know, straight from your kayak. It's pretty spectacular. You might also encounter some whales. You can go on a specific whale watching tour from Juneau. Um, what these humpback whales are doing here is catching fish in what they call a bubble net. They blow these bubbles up and it's a, you know, contraption to catch these fish. It's pretty cool. And I don't know how many of you have been up close and personal with a glacier, but it is really spectacular. I think the sound of the glacier is the most incredible thing I've ever heard. It is incredibly loud. It sounds, you know, like a huge crack, you know, in the, in the sound of the earth and you know, say nature really is in charge. A really special place in Alaska, of course, is Denali National Park. Um, there's many ways to experience it. I think one of the best ways to get to Denali National Park is by train. It's really a true Alaska experience. It's just about a four hour ride by train from Fairbanks. So if you take the early morning train, you can arrive at the entrance of the park by midday. Um, and there's so much to do inside the park. You can hike, you can go on a flight seeing trip, you can look for wildlife, there's just a ton to do. And I'm gonna highlight some of our favorite lodges in the park. This is Denali Backcountry Lodge. It's right near the entrance of the park. Um, it's a bit more rustic, and as you might know, you know, properties in Alaska in general are a bit more rustic feeling. Um, it's really about the nature and what you can do outside. Um, this is actually one of National Geographic's top 10 adventure lodges in the world. This is taken from Camp Denali. Um, these are individual cabins farther into the park. Um, so it's a long bus ride to these, um, to Camp Denali from the entrance of the park. But you know, from those who've stayed there, we'll tell you it's definitely worth it. You get views like this. This is taken at a lodge called Ultima Thule. Um, it's pretty high end. They focus on flying excursions every day. So they don't plan anything for you in advance, but you know you have a small bush plane available to you every day to do whatever you want. So you can go fishing, you can go hiking, but all via plane to go really to wherever you'd like. And this is the last lodge we'll highlight within the park. This is called the Sheldon Chalet, and it's available on exclusive use. So you and your family would reserve the whole thing. They were actually just featured in the New York Times this weekend. Um, this is at an altitude of 6,000 square feet with no cell service, no Wi-Fi. So if you really wanna go off the grid, this is your spot. Just a beautiful photo of Denali. A few of our, our other favorite lodges to highlight, um, Tutka Bay and Winter Lake Lodge. Um, they are part of a collection called Within the Wild in Alaska. They're National Geographic unique lodges of the world. Um, this is Tutka Bay here. You can get there by flying from Homer, um, flying to Homer, excuse me, and then taking a water taxi from there. And you can bird watch from here, you can go sea kayaking, deep sea fishing, brown bear viewing, there's just a ton of amazing outdoor activities to do from here. And this is available in the summer only. Um, and they really have a specialty in cooking. So their owner is a trained chef. So they have cooking classes every day and a real highlight on food. This is taken at Winter Lake Lodge, which like it sounds is available also in the winter. Um, their winter season is January through April. So they have some really special things to do in the winter. You know, in addition to a chance to see the Northern Lights, you can um, go on sled dog tours, cross country skiing. There's just a real ton to do here and look at this view you'll have. I'm handing it over to Corinne now to talk about some other highlights, have some other experiences. And just a quick hello to Francia, who would have stayed at Winter Lake. So great memories there. And Jerry, good to see you from LA. So yes, once again, food and wine, all about the nibblies for me. So this photo is actually coming back from a day of fishing out of Tutka Bay. And as a you know, sense of humor, I love it just for the halibut. Uh, when we got back to that dock, they had some great homemade recipes of lots of nibblies and uh, a few local beers and 
not local wines, but good wines to taste as well. So this area is the halibut fishing capital of the world. We actually stayed at Tutka for a couple of days in a self-contained condo, uh, condo style uh, lodge here. And it was with, within walking distance to everything else around that area. But I actually really enjoyed it because um, what makes this really special is that going out of here for fishing is absolutely fantastic as well. So we went fishing, this was waiting for us at the dock at the end of it, which was absolutely incredible. And my slides are frozen, Debbie, so I'm just gonna talk and continue on. This was our day out uh, when we went fishing out of Tutka. See how calm the waters were? This was my first halibut catch. And with that came uh, a mixture of salmon, rockfish, ling. So it was actually a really great private half day charter. What made this uh, really special this day, my favorite story of this area, we heard a little bit of a splash and then looked around and didn't see anything. And then all of a sudden we saw a small pod of orcas and it was absolutely fantastic. Needless to say, the fishing stopped, but the orcas uh, hung around and they were very curious and it was absolutely fantastic. So it's not uncommon to see otters, seals, whales breaching and the view around you of glaciers in the mountains when you're actually fishing out of Homer. So it's absolutely spectacular. Once again, another halibut, uh, another way to do it is to join small group as well. So instead of it just being your own charter, you may actually have a small group with you and you can actually max out your allowance of what you can uh, keep, but you can keep fishing here. And what's nice about this in this area is it's not uncommon to catch a hundred plus pound halibut. I think Jen, you're still on here as well. So I know you had a good um, workout when you went fishing uh, out of these areas as well. What's great about Alaska, it's fresh from the ocean, filleted for you, flash frozen, and shipped back to your home if you like, instead of catch and release. And Homer, this is a picture of a little, hi Amy. Yeah, holy halibut is right. Uh, this is downtown Homer, bustling little community, but it can get popular for fishing. So a couple of notes, while charters are plentiful, do book ahead. And for those longer trips, uh, the ones that you want to catch those big guys, if you just want to catch a mixture of really good fish, you can do a half day, a shorter charter for sure. And of course, if Katie's here, if not, you'll have someone left to let her know. Uh, this, after a long day of fishing or exploring, Salty Dog Saloon is a great way to celebrate. Once again, a great chance to meet the locals and to meet other people. Brady, I know you're here, so here's your smiling face. Uh, and it's cool fishing between Homer and Anchorage. This is at Seaward. Depending on what your fishing style is, we'll pair it for you. So in this sense, this was just a fraction of what that group caught that day. It was absolutely incredible. I was happy to be part of that and we took it all home. And I think that's a big part of what it makes Alaska so special. Our captain was a character and a half this day. Uh, he had his own fishing spots. So it is, really great to have that insider local knowledge that we can put you in touch with to make sure you get what you want out of the trip. Um, there's plenty of otters and seals and whales breaching this day. And as you can see, plenty of seagulls following us back home. And I think those elements of figuring out the mixture of the two is what Alaskans do and they're so special about. Princea, you'll have to let Aiden know. Uh, he's, here he is. It's King Salmon. So we're now gone from Big Halibut to now King Salmon. And this is usually a bucket fishing trip for a lot of people. Uh, Aiden, with his great catch, best way, if you're looking at catching one of these guys, is to stay at a remote fishing lodge. We can help pair you with the right one. And usually you're there for seven day allotments uh, and you go for a week. Doug, with his giant King Salmon, chance to actually go out by seaplane to these locations with remote lakes. You can also do ocean trout. So you're not just one type of fishing, you'll be fly fishing also. And just a reminder, King Salmon, June, July in these sorts of areas. So <laughs> it's not a fake picture, I promise you. <laughs> but there are also many other types of salmon. So there's five major ones we can fish for up there, example like silvers. Uh, trout's also very popular here. If you're not that hardcore of a fisherman or you're going with a small young family, not a problem. Here we are with just a local couple of hours 
out fishing with a local off the rocks close to Juneau. We had a lot of laughs. Uh, you may not catch fish, just a heads up if you're doing this experience, but it's a lot of fun and uh, you certainly get to have a good chat with the locals. And last, but for me, I wanna to touch on really importantly is cruising. And traditionally speaking, people think of Alaska with large ships. Alaska does best with small group cruising. Great for a group of family or friends. And you'll enjoy with this part of cruising is you get to see a ton of marine life because you're a lot more silent. Nothing beats a small charter cruising in Alaska. You have access to areas no roads or people can get to on a daily basis. So for that remote element, it's so special. A big shout out to the Shaw family for those who have joined us. This is one of my favorite photos and memories. Uh, it's absolutely incredible to get close to the glaciers. Uh, you can do everything from stand up paddle boarding, bear beauty. Uh, this was our winners in the kayak race that we did so we can handcraft a trip for you. And Pam and Zach are in this pic. So we had an impromptu kayak competition. I will say they are the reigning champs until the next time. What makes it best also is the chance to view. Here we are viewing, looking for bears, we're looking for orcas, we're looking for the whales up close around Juneau, like Admiralty Island, where Debbie went to, and Gustavus, and Glacier Bay, Douglas Glacier is amazing. So handcrafting, you take the vessel, we handcraft the trip with the people and the time that you have. So after us standing for a little while, we were rewarded by seeing a family of orcas. Uh, it's, it's absolutely incredible. To be able to see the wildlife, to be able to see the nature at its best. And this is a shout out to Nancy because it's one of Nancy's photos. It's great for families and wildlife lovers and for those who want to feel remote. The access to be up close to glaciers and to experience the real Alaska, it doesn't compare. And this is what we love to do. And those are the faces we love to see. We've never created the same trip twice and handcrafting trips of a lifetime is what we love. So Joe, what makes so special? We talked about John at the start, here's Joe. So Joe had, came on board and gave us a chance to hear what Alaska is like to live in, what it's like for him and what it means to him, to learn about the history and their beliefs and to come home with a new perspective of Alaska and new mates that you'll keep in contact with, like Ken from Quad Biking. It's like a living classroom, especially for families or those who are, have a bit of a thirst for knowledge. We can really have a lot of fun with that. And no matter what your travel style is, we can add those special touches. So like for us, this was some great hikes. We can actually give you the trails of where we saw these carvings. This pick is from a hike closer to Judo with easier access for people. But what makes it special, Ed, if you're joining us, is access remote as well. The real Alaska. And Alaska is basically one huge hiking, fishing, outdoor playground. Uh, and so remote villages and hiking trails are plentiful, literally everywhere. Many of them are well maintained and Alaskans are very proud of their trail system. They do a really good job. They work hard at maintaining it. So Ed, here you are outside the glacier when we were in Whittier Peninsula. Uh, gum boots essential. Yes, absolutely. Julie and Katie, thanks for this photo. And, uh, you know, we talked about all the different areas you can hike, but some do require a guide. Some do you need to have an experienced hiker leading you. Uh, and some are very close, literally even outside the airport. We went for a walk, uh, Jen's on here I saw, and saw a moose in the trail, just wandering about. So if you are a little bit more hardcore, Doug has done this, a reservation pass trail outside of Hope. There's just depending on what you need, we have the hike for you. And uh, to this trail in the background you see here is the Denali National Park is the edge of. So this is the southern edge of Denali National Park. You're not even in National Park, it's an incredible. And it's only like Debbie had said, a couple hours drive from Anchorage. So best time to enjoy many of these hikes, of course, June through September, when the weather and days are long and nice and warm. Very temperate. So thanks for joining us today. I asked for you to pop a few questions in the chat function now, but 
the important thing is just we want to touch a little bit on Alaska. So, you know, there's so much we haven't covered. Northern Lights, truly. And, you know, I have had the question, what bar do we find Sig Hansen at in Dutch Harbour from the deadliest catch fence? Uh, so just those little touches we'd like to add. Whatever you need out of your adventure, we like to think of this as we can't get to New Zealand right now. This is a glimpse and a taste of it closer to home. And our goal is always to inspire you with ideas for your next vacation. And so when you're actually looking for remote landscapes and a place where you want to be an explorer, Alaska's right in our backyard and we are happy to help. And I'll hand it over to Laura. I almost forgot to unmute. Um, thanks, Corinne. So our next Travel Tuesday is June 23rd uh, at five o'clock. We'll be talking conservation in Africa. So what that means is how your stay impacts the local area, the people, what kind of of, um, you know, efforts they put forth to keep things moving in the right direction for Africa um, and what that looks like. There's a lot more of um, details behind the scenes than you might expect. And um, we have listed our contact details there. Please reach out to us with questions, comments, interests, whatever it may be. We would love to hear from you. Um, and if you're looking to plan a trip, we will certainly connect you with someone um, that knows the area. And Laura, I just want to say we, because we had to move this webinar, we actually moved the next webinar as well. So we're not ju June 23rd, yeah. July 7th. So we will send everyone information about that um, after the webinar. And we'd love to answer anybody's questions now. And I saw a few pop up. Um, so we were talking about just to kind of recover the, the cruise and Whittier um, size of the boats, options, things like that. Um, our tour, uh, we chartered a boat for just the six of us. Um, so it was a pretty comfortable size. There was an interior and an exterior portion. It was probably something like a 30 to 40 foot boat. Um, and there was quite a bit of room to move around. I know Karen and Doug have done something similar. So if you want to chime in at all. Yeah, so we've done everything from just the two of us uh, to then uh, we had a group of 14 on one charter. We knew everyone on that. And then we joined a half day trip out of Homer, which we didn't know anyone. And it was really good value. So we were just looking for a little bit more fishing experience. And there was up to 20 to 30 people on that boat that day, more of a family focused in that arena. So I think there's pretty much a boat of every size and in particular around Homer. And then if you're actually staying at one of the lodges, then it could be just the two of you or up to eight, depending on the size of the seaplane. And uh, they divide you up. Some of you may go halibut, some of you may go king, and then you will switch out the next day to make sure everybody gets a chance. Awesome. Um, and then from Wolfie, we have suggestions on best time of the year to travel. Debbie, do you want to touch on that? Sure. So a lot of these summer activities, you know, like fishing and hiking, that's really best to do in the summer. But there's so much to do in Alaska in the winter too, especially if you want to see the northern lights. That's a little bit more likely in the winter, although, you know, nature does its own thing. We can never guarantee it. Um, Cross-country skiing, dog sledding. So it really depends on the activity you'd like to do. Um, and there's different times of year for different kinds of salmon as well. Awesome. And we got for our first trip to Alaska, how long do you need? Um, we spent seven days there, so a full week. Um, I would say that's a good time, but of course, if you can tack on a few extra days, you'll really get that extra spe special experience, whether it's doing um, a remote location, you know, just heading a little bit further um, out into the wild, uh, whatever it may be, there's always more to explore. So it's, um, it's your time and we'll make the most of it. And I would just add on to that with Laura too. We have spent a month there one time and we self drove a lot of the area. Of course, as Debbie mentioned, you can't drive to Juneau, but that's a, that's a flight, but the, or a boat, but the other options are extensive. So truly I would start with Laura, what she said, but if you want to go a little bit longer, we can really handcraft something pretty amazing. If you've got that much time, that's, that's the challenge for sure. 
Yeah. Um, and so we kind of touched on, and the other one, I guess, would be do most people usually plan a one week or two week trip? Um, Corinne, do you? Yeah, I would say most people would do a partial cruise, partial land into making it a two week trip. Uh, otherwise, a really great road trip could be two weeks quite easily. You could do seven days. If you're doing a fishing trip, it's usually a week long the way that they that they arrive you and depart you to make sure you cover everything. And that is so you're usually taking on one night on each side of that. So that's usually a nine day trip. But uh, boy, you could have a lot of fun for five days and get to a remote lodge for sure. Just need to make sure you plan a little bit for weather and to not be too tight of a schedule. Um, okay, cool. We have, how is COVID impacting Alaska? Are the restaurants open, um, et cetera? You know, um, Debbie, you have a little bit of info on arrival? Yeah, you know, it depends on the tours that you're doing. Um, I had clients just adjust because the cruise they were booked on um, was canceled. Um, there's a lot that's still open in Alaska. So, you know, it's pretty specific to your trip. Um, so I suggest contacting us and we'll, you know, go through all the elements of your itinerary with you. Um, and then any restrictions for travel? Um, are the glacier tours and kayak trips servicing and open and will they be in August? Um, there are a few restrictions for travel. It does depend on where you fly in and out of. Um, so if you have specific questions, please reach out to us. We'd be happy to walk you through the current regulations. Um, we all know that that may change, um, but we're sure to keep you up to date. Um, most of the operators are running. Um, um, there are a few that have decided to shut down for the, or not open, I guess, for the year. Um, but I would say the majority are definitely up and eager to accept guests um, as they have such a short season generally. Um, so they're ready and waiting. Yeah, that's a really good point. What makes that special is you're going to have hardly anyone there later this season compared to a normal season. So I guess that is a bonus. And uh, just for a quick update for a quote that we did last week, as of last week, of course, things change very quickly. Uh, new entry requirements, no more 14 day quarantine on arrival. Uh, you'll need a negative COVID-19 test within 72 hours prior to landing in Anchorage or Juneau, et cetera. And uh, you can also get a test done at the airport. So uh, it's really a nice, really nice if you can get in this season you're hardly going to find anybody around and that makes it pretty special that and no cruise ships <laughs> and no cruise ships no cruise ships absolutely incredible well i think that wraps it up as far as questions go if we missed anything again please send it through we're more than happy to answer for you um thank you so much for joining hopefully we see you on our next series Hi everyone, thank you.